Hello everyone, it's Elsie Terry with Money and Me 360, your transformational coach. So listen, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited about this particular video. Uh, for this month, we've really been diving into how to budget, how to really manage your money in an effective way where you can maximize uh, your money, where you can maximize your time, and where you can maximize your resources. And so for today, I'm going to be talking about two debt weapons that I particularly love to use and have been using for years okay one particular method I've been using since I was a little girl which is the envelope system and we'll get into that uh, a little bit down the line in this video but most importantly I want to share with you one of the debt weapons that I love to use and that is called the sinking fund method Okay, and some of you may have heard of the sinking fund method. Some of you may have not heard of the sinking fund method. But with the sinking fund method, it's really uh, just a way to allow you to save in increments uh, that won't disturb your regular monthly bills. Okay, so for instance, and it's for if you if you know you have to make larger purchases somewhere down the line in the year. This is just a simple, clean, and easy way for you to save for that very same purchase without really feeling the brunt of having to make a large uh, sum purchase at one time. Okay, so with sinking funds, you know, it literally is a way to save once again for a large purchase without really feeling the brunt of that purchase. So I like it because it allows you to accumulate the money throughout the year. So for instance, you know that Christmas comes around once a year for those who celebrate Christmas and like to buy uh, gifts. You know that Christmas is coming every year on the 25th, right? That's a great reason to use this method that I'm about to teach you. You know that every year it's your child's birthday or you're going to have a birthday. And if you're the type of person who like to make purchases or buy gifts for birthdays, this is a great method that you can use uh, for those particular purchases. Or maybe you like to travel. I like to travel. Personally, I'm not a things person, but I love to pay for experiences. So I love to travel. I love experiences. I love great museums. I love traveling to different cities. On my bucket list is to make it to all 50 states. And uh, so I need a sinking fund for that. I have to have a a method where I can actually pay for these things without feeling the brunt or if I want to travel abroad or if I want to go to the Caribbean or if I want to go to another country or another continent. Sinking funds are a great way to pay for those large purchases or even if you want to make a home maintenance um, fund. It's a great system to use for those types of purchases. So with a sinking fund, I particularly like to couple it with the envelope system, which is a very simple system if you don't want to have, you know, a bunch of different accounts outside of your regular checking and savings accounts. So with the envelope system coupled with the sinking fund system, you simply take us a portion of what you would pay for the whole amount and pay a portion of it monthly. So for instance, you know that Christmas comes around every year. Let's say your budget for Christmas in this example, you know at the beginning of the year, hey, I only want to spend $600 for a Christmas gift for my son. And Christmas is in December. This is, let's just, just say at the beginning of the year. Well, you know that your budget for Christmas is $600, which means you have 12 months to pay into this particular sinking fund. So what you would do is literally $600 divided by 12 is $50 a month. So what you would do is you would take $50 a month and put it into your little sinking fund envelope. You would write on that envelope, Christmas fund, $600 by December or whatever your deadline is. And then every month, once a month, you're gonna put $50 in there. 50 times 12 is 600. And voila, by the time December gets here, you have your $600 budget already funded in that sinking fund envelope. Now, what I personally like to do as well is place a ledger inside of the envelope. And what I normally do is put those envelopes inside of a shoebox in my closet. And 
you won't miss that money because you're only paying $50 a month for whatever your budget is. In this particular example, the budget was $600 for Christmas. So you have 12 months, $50 a month. By the time December gets here, you have your $600 sinking fund budget for Christmas. Let's use another example. Let's say, you know, you know that in September, I'm from Chicago. Uh, you know in September it's getting ready to get cold through October through April. So maybe you need a new set of tires. So at the beginning of the year, you already know that winter is coming again and you're going to need that new set of tires. So if you know the purchase for a new set of tires for your particular car is going to cost you $800 and you know this year uh, for next year, you want to you, you want to get that new set of tires for eight hundred dollars. Well, what you would do is create a sinking fund and simply write on that envelope sinking fund for new set of tires. Eight hundred divided by twelve is only six hundred sixty dollars a month. What you would simply do is take sixty dollars a month. If you get paid every two weeks, you can even break that down thirty dollars every two weeks. Throw it in that sinking fund envelope, put it in that shoebox, tucked away somewhere in your closet, and be faithful and be diligent to pay yourself $60 a month into your new tire sinking fund. And by the time 12 months is up, because you want those new tires next year, this time, you have your $800 and you're not going to feel the brunt of making that larger purpose purchase I'm sorry so for me I have over the years used my sinking funds for travel so if I know this time next year I want to take a vacation cruise because I like cruising I like going to the Caribbean if I know that that vacation cruise is going to cost me a thousand dollars to pay for the cruise or I want a thousand dollars for my spending money well guess what I'm going to create my travel fund sinking a fund and what I would just do is just throw a hundred dollars in there every month and by this time next year when my cruise or my Caribbean vacation comes okay I have my thousand dollars spending money and I won't feel the brunt of feeling bad about overspending or anything like that because I prepared by creating my sinking fund to fund it so the purpose of a sinking fund is so that you won't sink <laughs> when you're trying to make those larger purchases. Now, you don't have to do the envelope system. I per particularly like to just throw the money in an envelope and not put it in my checking account or not put it in my savings account because I don't want to see that money and think that it's available to me. You could also just maybe create a sub account. Some banks do have sub accounts that are particularly labeled and they'll even let you label that account online and say travel fund. Um, so that's another way if you don't want to do actual cash in a shoebox. I particularly like the cash in my shoebox. So you can use this method for anything that you desire to do. So let's say it's a travel fund, it's a birthday fund, it's a Christmas fund, even a home maintenance fund. Let's say you know that you want to get a new furnace next year and that furnace is going to cost you whatever it's going to cost you. Well, just take that total amount, divide it by 12 and Throw that money into that sinking fund. Now, one last thing I really want to talk about when it comes to sinking funds is I particularly like to advise uh, homeowners, if you're a homeowner, to make sure you have a sinking fund of 1% of your home value. So this particular sinking fund is going to just fund if something breaks down. Okay, let's say your warranty is up for whatever reason on your home appliances and you need to go and buy a new refrigerator. Well, if you made a sinking fund that was 1% of the value of your home, so for example, let's say your home is worth $200,000. Well, 1% of $200,000 is $2,000. So each month you would simply throw $100. I'm sorry, is my math right? I told you guys I can't do math in my head. So 1%... Divided by 12. So every month you would throw $166 into your home maintenance sinking fund. If you don't have to use it, then you don't have to use it. But I recommend having a 1% of your home value sinking fund. So in this example, uh, if you have a home that's $200,000, 1% of that is $2,000.
just keep that tucked away and if something breaks down you can just go in your sinking fund and take from that two thousand dollar sinking fund that you saved over that 12 months then of course you don't have to do that every year um, and it'll work for you i hope you enjoyed this video